How do you install the Venus operating system onto a Raspberry Pi? Hi folks, I'm Roger from Offgrid and in this episode we're going to show you how to install the Venus operating system onto a Raspberry Pi. So before we actually start, I, I think if you are watching this you would already know what a Raspberry Pi is and what uh, Venus is but uh, just in case you don't I'll explain it very briefly. So this is a Raspberry Pi it's a very simple computer that was uh, invented in the UK and uh, is very inexpensive. You can buy these for under £50 when they're available. Currently there's a huge demand and a, and a massive backlog of them but they say they're going to catch up by the end of this year. But you can buy these off eBay at the moment or Amazon for about £60 and when they come back into stock you'll be able to buy them uh, probably for less than £40 uh, for a 2 gig version, uh, uh, version 4 2 gig. So they're very neat little units and these can do the job of a, a Serbo GX a Victron Serbo GX at a fraction of the price. So about a third of the price of a full Serbo GX solution. So we're going to take you through in this episode, this is one of three episodes and in this episode we'll take you through uh, how to install the operating system onto a Raspberry Pi to uh, build your own Serbo GX. In the next uh, episode we're going to be covering connecting it all to the internet and that sort of thing and then in the final episode we're going to be installing one in Nigel's van and we're going to take you through everything, all the cables that we needed to use and all that sort of stuff. So stick with us and let's get to it. So what you're going to need, obviously you need the Pi itself. You're going to need an SD card. So this is a very inexpensive uh, 32 gig SD card. I think the absolute minimum that you can get away with is two gigs. That is because the operating system is round about one and a half gigs and that will give you a little bit of storage. Uh, in case you're offline what happens is that the Raspberry Pi uh, stores data on the Pi itself on the card but when you connect back to the Victron system it then transfers all the data to Victron and it doesn't need to store it on the Pi on the card itself. So uh, very efficient in terms of how much space you need. So minimum two gig but it's a funny thing in this day and age it's usually more expensive to try and find a 2 or an 8 gig as opposed to a 32 gig. Uh, 32 gig or 16 gig seems to be the the sweet spot of pricing they see, they seem to be as cheap as chips and it doesn't matter if you're using a slow one or a fast one what you're trying to do with it it doesn't actually matter too much because what it's going to do is it's going to boot up maybe a bit slower if the card's slow and then it's not going to need to access the card much after that so this is just a very it's a Kexon of Amazon 32 gig very inexpensive. It was about £10 for three cards in, in the bundle. You're going to need a card reader writer. I'm using this old Kiwi Bird one. I like it because I can either use USB-C or I can use uh, normal USB. And so this being a Mac, I've got USB-C, so that's what I'm going to use. So uh, let's just put this into the card reader for the time being and just keep it on standby. Now, if you see my screen, you'll see that uh, I'm running a Mac, obviously, but I'm also running a Windows session in parallels here. So I'm going to show you how to install this, the, the operating system, the Venus operating system, both on the Mac and uh, in Windows. So whatever you've got, uh, that should work for you. So let's start with the Mac. And th there, there are quite a number of applications and programs out there that you can use to actually write the, the software onto, onto the SD card. One of the very popular ones is something called Bellina Etcher, which I've just uh, loaded up. Let me just quit out of it and load it again so that you can see what it looks like when it starts up. So with the Bellina Etcher, it works absolutely great. You choose a file, choose your target, and you flash, and it just works. But I'm going to be showing you the uh, Raspberry Pi's own system that they have got. Before we actually even get there, I need to show you how you would actually get to the software. So let's get to that. So before you, you start trying to write it, you're going to need to download the correct image off the Victron Energy site. And uh, as you can see, uh, I've loaded up the site here. So the, the full URL is here, so we'll uh, give you that link in the bottom so that you can just click on it. But once you go to this site, 
you are presented with quite a number of files over here. The ones that you are interested in are, are usually at the top, so they, they sort them by uh, reverse date. And uh, you can see, well, not quite reverse date because there's some 2022 ones there. And then we get to the 2023 uh, 209.04.13. And then the, finally this one here, which is the most recent one and is now 246 megs. So you can see each time they increase slightly in size. So 246 megs. And we've got two files that are identically uh, all uh, daytime stamped and also identical sizes. I'm not sure why they do this because when you download these two files that I'm showing you here, they, the contents are exactly the same. So why they repeat it, I'm not exactly sure. But anyway, you can download either of these two files. I've already downloaded them. And uh, if you're if you're running this on a Mac, uh, you're, it's going to self-extract this zip. This GZ is actually a zip file. If you're running on Windows, it, it won't. Or if you're running on Chrome or something like that, it, it won't uh, automatically extract them. So these are the images that you are going to download. And yeah, there, there are loads of things listed, but just look for the one that has the most recent date. And it doesn't matter if it's this one or that one, they are the same. So this gives you the operating system that you can download. And it doesn't matter whether you're using Windows or Mac, it's the same location. If you go to this, which we'll give you the URL again, if you go to this site here, that gives you, uh, that's the link to where you can download uh, software to write the images to the SD card. Because I'm looking at this on a Mac, it's, it's by default on download for Mac OS. If I come across to my uh, Windows machine, uh, you'll see it by default, it'll be download for Windows. So whichever operating system you're running, it should it should default to the one for that operating system. So I've downloaded this. Uh, it went into my downloads folder and I installed it. And now I'm ready to uh, actually run this on the Mac. So I have my application to write the SD card and I have my operating system ready to go. So let's go to applications. So under your applications on the Mac, you'll see it's listed as Raspberry Pi Imager. So if I double tap that, uh, it tells you the usual stuff about it's downloaded for the internet. Yes, I'm fine, let's open it. A very, very simple application, as you can see there, where you're gonna choose your operating system and choose your storage. So let's let's put the card in for now. I'll put my card reader in. Let's choose the operating system. You're gonna to have to go down to, it's got some generic operating systems to start with and you'll need to go to the bottom and you will use custom and it would like to access your documents folder. That's fine. So it's on my downloads and it's this one here. So it by default, it wants to open up the uncompressed file, but you can choose whichever file type you want. So I've chosen that, and then I choose the storage card, and it's given me a generic storage device over there, and really simple. I write it, you say yes, and it needs the password for your Mac. And it would like to access files in removable volume. That's okay. And then it starts installing. So quite a lot of uh, security features kick in on a Mac, which is a good thing. I don't think as many pop up for Windows, but that's fine. Right, uh, as you can see, the uh, message has popped up here saying that uh, the write is successful and we could just continue. So what you're going to do is go to your binder window and if it hasn't shown itself there, you can just exit it normally. And some sometimes it actually shows on the locations and then you must eject it properly. So there's your card. You can just slot your card straight into the Raspberry Pi and boot it up, job done. Let me take you through uh, the process that you would do on, on Windows, which is also very, very similar, but I'll take you through it anyway, just so that you can see it exactly. Putting in a different card and that's coming into my Mac there. In this one here, again, you would download the, the Raspberry Pi Imager 
from this site. And on your uh, Windows machine, it's exactly the same site. Uh, so it's this site here that we'll give you the link to. And uh, you choose either this file or that file, it doesn't matter. And when you download that onto Windows, it will uh, occupy just the 246 megs because it'll be a compressed file. So that's cool. So you go to your Raspberry Pi imager and you choose. And again, you go to the bottom and you to use custom and uh, in my downloads uh, I've got two that are identical as you can see those I downloaded them both to file compare them and find that they were identical so you could choose either of the two and you choose your storage in exactly the same way as you did on the Mac and you write that and you say yes and no more questions I think on a, on a Windows PC it takes about the same length of time to write it on there but should be identical to the Mac. So exactly the same as with the Mac. The message actually looks exactly the same. Uh, when you complete, you can remove the SD card from the machine and close that down. I'm going to eject that from there and just show you what the hoop. So it's it's now appeared on my Mac and, and Finder. And as you can see, those are all of the files. So you can actually read the disk on a, on a Mac afterwards, but you can't read it on a Windows machine. Once you've written the operating system onto here, don't try and access it on your Windows machine because you'll just corrupt it on the Mac. It's fine. There we have it. So the first, first of three sessions. This one, very simple, how to write the operating system onto your um, SD card. And remember, if you're going to take it out, eject it on your Mac first. And uh, there you have it done. So hopefully you found that useful and uh, it'll help you to get started. We, we have a very comprehensive document that we've drawn up that will take you through all of the components that you need, the uh, Raspberry Pi itself, even a reasonable link of SD cards and Amazon, the card readers, cables that uh, would come in handy. A touchscreen, a really nice inexpensive touchscreen that you can mount in your vehicle or whatever. And uh, that document has uh, full, full detailed instructions and all the links of where you download these things and, and uh, that sort of thing. The first link in the description down below will take you to a site where you can register for that document and uh, we will send you an email with it uh, immediately. So thanks for watching and I hope you found that useful and hopefully see you in the next and the next episode. Cheers.